Hello, my name is Gary Mansfield and this is the Ministry of Arts podcast where each week I'll be speaking to a different artist. Now let's begin by bagging these bongos. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 214 of the Ministry of Arts podcast. Firstly, as ever, many thanks to our Patreon supporters, without whom we would not be able to produce this podcast. There'll be a little message at the end of this episode if you'd like to um, find out any more details how you could support via our Patreon page. Well, the Ministry of Arts has now had confirmation from the wonderful Vestalia Chilton that we will again be partnering with the Kensington and Chelsea Art Week, where we will be talking to each and every one of the participating artists. It will be the third year we've done it and loved it every year. That will be happening very shortly. We've recently spoke to Ben Oakley of the Ben Oakley Gallery and the subsequent move of that said gallery. And although I think he said he's moved 72 feet or something like that, it's a move nonetheless. So Ben, come on to tell us all about that and all that's changed and all that he has in store. But anyway, back to today's episode, episode 214. In this episode, I spoke to Charlie Hayden Taylor. I came across Charlie's work some time ago on Instagram. He creates architectural paintings that are a mix of digital and physical media. And what caught my eye initially, they had that sort of dark, mysterious hopper feel, you know. So, as you do when you find something you're interested in, I looked through his feed, popped over to his website, read a little about him and, well, I wanted to know more. So, contacted him, invited him on. So, please, come and join me over Zoom as I spoke to Charlie Hayden-Smith, who luckily enough happened to be in Jersey when we spoke. Enjoy. There we go. How are we doing? Not bad. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, you're more than welcome. I can't see you, though. Hang on. Here we go. That uh. should be <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Put oh, it my back. God. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, man? You good? I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm um, I'm back in on the island of Jersey at the moment. Oh, nice. Um, which is where I'm, where I'm originally from um helping curate a show over here so <clears throat> whereabouts is that gonna be so it's a, a gallery over here so there's only there's only a couple of galleries um but there's one very good one and i've got to know him over lockdown when i came back here and um so yeah i'm just been helping sort of come up with a roster of artists and putting some of my own work in and, and yeah i've been busy and what are they are it's artists from jersey no it's a mixture so we're kind of trying to mix some secondary market and primary market stuff so we've got yeah some you know quite established artists. We've got some Julian OP prints, and we've got uh, Ian Davenport, um, nice. Jason Martin, people like that. And then some hand selected artists. I know that you know Enter Gallery quite well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So a few people from there, and yeah, I'm making it quite a fun sort of pop art show. Oh, good. Yeah, that's yeah, gonna be great. And what's the art scene like on the island? It's conservative historically. Yeah, um, of course. It's, we always say it's about ten years behind London. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to have a bit of an impact on bringing contemporary art more into the forefront, which is what me and this art dealer that I'm working with are doing. And it's going well. I mean, because, I mean, there's a lot of quite wealthy people over here. And, um, you know, a lot of them have houses in New York and London. So they understand the art market. Yeah. Um, but they would typically tend to buy in those cities. So we're trying to bring those kind of people back and show them that, you know, we can we can work with some great um, some great things and sell to great collectors. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. But okay. is there anything over there like the sort of um, like an inter gallery? Because they're the ones for the mainstream that are just flourishing at the minute, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Well, I know. So we've got um, there's a gallery called CCA Galleries, who they their print studios called Cor- Coriander Studios, and okay. so they do all the printing for Peter Blake. Um, I think they do Terry Frost. Um, there's quite a few names. And I know that Enter work quite closely with them because they sell a lot of Peter Blakes and things like yeah. that. So they have a small gallery over here um, and they tend to just do, do sort of their only their represented artists. Um, but then, yeah, the one I'm working with, private and public galleries, it tends to be sort of, you know, fine art shows and 
changes sort of every every month and and a um, bit of a different system. So they and what, is, what is the population on Jersey? It's about one hundred and twenty thousand. Oh, so it's like a large it's a, it's town. Like a town. It's like a town, yeah. Um, and it's quite spread out. So we've got St. Helier, which is the main town. And then yeah. the other, what we call parishes, um, are basically sort of around and then, you know, beaches and, and, and whatnot. So, but it's only about uh, 12 miles by five miles or something like that. Nice. So I've not, ne never been, but it's, it's, it's been on my list to go to for years. You should do. I mean, easy to get to, you know, slightly hotter um, and good yeah. beaches. So yeah, it's a good it's a good place. Nice, and um, just to to start this podcast, I've got yeah. several questions that I ask each artist. Of course, yeah. And the first being, how would you explain what you do to someone that might not know your work? Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so a lot of my stuff focuses on interior architecture um, as a bit of a basis. Um, something I've always been interested in. Um, I, I originally studied design at Goldsmiths um, University, so I definitely have that kind of feel for design as well as art. So I think that's where the architectural kind of side of things plays yeah. in. Um, I'm also quite interested in psychology. So it's the idea of how we think and feel and behave in the privacy of our own homes. I say I say my work kind of falls into the category of pop art. Um, because I also like to throw in and collage in sort of different elements of everyday life, like objects and consumer products and things like that, almost as a way to tell a sort of narrative. Um, and then I've got artists that I, I, I'm inspired by, like Edward Hopper. Um, oh, yeah, you can see that. Yeah. yeah, who sort of, you know, that idea of isolation, I guess. I think um, there's a bit of that which ties in from me being from Jersey, but living in London and sort of going from a very small place to a very busy place. Where and in was, London are you based? I'm South London, so I'm okay. around um, Stockwell is where my yeah, street is. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, but I found it, always found it quite a weird sort of paradox of it being, you know, you feel almost more lonely the busier the city you live yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a funny one. So I think there's that kind of feeling in my work, um, which I think Edward Hopper was, was most notably famous for. Yeah. Um, but I've just kind of played that in a more contemporary fashion. You know, things like technology has contributed to that even more so now and, like to tie in that a bit as well so yeah that's that's how I would explain it yeah, yeah when I when I was looking at your work I mean I should say that we got chatting on on the socials and and that's yeah. how this this come about there but when I was looking at your work on there it was hardware to like to to, to put a hat on you if you like you yeah know. I guess so yeah and I think because my career's kind of taken off in the last sort of three four years um the work that I was making four years ago you can see it's similar to my work now, but it's also very different at the same time. I mean, yeah. before it was a lot brighter palettes. I had figures that I was collaging into the pieces um, and I was going sort of approaching things from a more political and social um, theme, whereas now they're a lot more personal. Um, I don't put figures in because I like people to kind of put themselves in the pieces, I guess. Yeah, and it's less lonely if there's someone else there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I guess if there's more than one, um, but I almost went from the perspective of, you know, don't put anyone in, allow the viewer to kind of picture themselves in that scenario. Yeah. And I guess that's where the feeling comes from. Although you're using many warm colours, it was the starkness and the coldness that did sort of attract me into your work. It's very yeah. linear and angled and, yeah. and like you say, it's quite lonely and architectural. Exactly. And it's, yeah, I think, and when you think about it from an architectural perspective, you know, where you've got old sort of renaissance buildings they used to be sort of very ornate and busy but i think you know with with homes now very modern architecture they can be quite cold um and yeah. I think my interest in that plays into the isolation theme a bit more of sort of emptiness and and with the way i paint which tends to be quite flat block colors um you get that feeling of that kind of modern architecture anyway and, and it kind of complements it yeah well i've recently done a podcast with alice mara a ceramicist who okay. Um, she made from clay people's houses like they would send photographs of her houses and she would model them in clay and yeah so it's just sure. a slab built structure um but that's what she was saying it's easy for her to do like a Georgian house or something with a lot of character yeah but with the new modern almost linear type houses she finds it hard to find a bit of personality in them and I think there's something to be said for sort of emptiness and minimalism you know uh, being in that realm of sort of isolation and you know I always think if you look at what like work by Mark Rothko for example you mm. know 
you can see people and you can go there and you stand in front of one and it's very emotional and you see people crying and and but you know they're very minimal and basic and I always think that kind of devoid of too much going on can actually yeah. a bit more of a powerful uh powerful makes, makes the viewer add the information in their I mind think, doesn't it yeah. yeah exactly and I think that's the approach that I, I go to with the kind of no figures now um you know in that same sort of way well you mentioned about the art scene on Jersey which is I presume where you grew up yeah and so was there art in the home growing up yeah so Typically, that's a good question, because actually my my parents, um, which is where I'm, I'm staying at the moment while I'm working on this show, but they have typically collected um, more re uh, well, Renaissance, but sort of Impressionist, um, French Impressionism, um, a lot of Jersey artists from the sort of 1800s, quite a bit of an older style, basically. But yeah. since I've been doing what I'm doing sort of full time and been working here a bit, it's had an influence on their collection. Oh, nice, so, nice. You know, they they started collecting more contemporary art, which is which has been great. Um, and you know, not picking up sort of quite not, you know big names, but prints of and not you know incredibly valuable things. But you know, recently they acquired a Tracy Emin um, post signed poster, you know, which was really yeah, cool. Yeah. A light neon series. Um, we have a Picasso etching, which is very interesting. Um, so yeah, it's exciting for me to kind of come home and see them actually being interested <laughs> in it. Like, oh, look what I found, look what we got, they got this deal yeah. and everything. And amazing, yeah. So it's been a lot of fun kind of getting them into that. Brilliant. So when was it you realised that you wanted to use art as a career? Yeah. Um, well, it, I went full-time over lockdown. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So, well, basically, so I, like I said before, I was at Goldsmiths University and I did design. I always wanted to be an artist, but I did. I knew that the commercial side of being a designer was, you know, where a bit more money. Safer, would be. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it was like, yeah. My parents would say, you know, you're going off to uni, and and being an artist is great, but you've got to make a career of it, and that might be difficult. And so I worked. I worked as a graphic designer for a year out of um, university. Uh, worked for a, a financial um, company as their brand designer. It was weird though, because I mean, I was in a suit every day and <laughs> not like what I'm like now. It's hilarious. Yeah. But I did that. And then I was always making work part time um, in my free time and stuff. And how long ago was it when you left uni? Uh, 2018. Oh, fucking hell. Okay. Yeah, about five years ago. Yeah. So I did that, did that for a year. And then I came back to Jersey when lockdown hit. So I, I was renting a flat and there was a bit of a um, few issues about renting and, and worries about that. So I came back. And approached this gallery over here and um, he said, I'm actually doing a show that's coming up and I think your work would suit it. And he put me alongside a David Hockney. Nice. Um, and, and, you know, there's me, you know, having not been in a show before going, oh, my God. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it's not a bad place to start, is it? Not a bad place. So, yeah, I remember there was a Banksy on one side and a David Hockney on the other. And it's hard to go up from there, isn't it? A, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but no, that was a great start. And then I think other galleries picked up on that and thought that was interesting. And, and I managed to go full time from there on. So it's, it was you and your two mates. It was me and my two mates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not met. You don't, don't know Banksy. <laughs> and and when, was, when was that during the first lockdown or just during? That was first lockdown because we were quite a bit luckier here that things weren't as strict. Yeah. I mean, there were still policies in place and things. But I remember when it was really severe in, in London, um, for instance, here we could still see people and you could have events for under 10 people um up to 10 people yeah so it was it was we were lucky that we could drag that one out a bit and that show was coincided with that so we were lucky to get it on oh nice yeah and which piece do you think that you've created has got the strongest emotional connection it's a good point i mean I mean, so typically all my pieces either focus on nighttime or early morning, which is when I find the kind of the most stillness. I like the idea of the morning pieces when no one else is awake. You know, the idea that, you know, not or, or, or vice versa, being nocturnal and in the evenings when everyone else is asleep. And yeah. there's this quite, kind of quietness to the world, I guess. But I know I created a piece recently that was titled In the Morning Stillness, um, early, very early morning piece sort of sun rising. And I just feel that probably captured the essence of uh, how I was feeling at the time best and the kind of quietness of the early morning. And because sometimes, it, you know, it's a similar theme throughout the work, but sometimes you feel like you capture it better in other pieces than. Uh, yeah, in, of course, of course. Um, so, no, I think that's probably my favourite piece I've created. And that was the 
the second last piece that I, I created. So, um, but no, I think that, that would be the one. And the subject that you've got, where did that subject come from? Was it because of the graphic design that you was doing previously? I think so. I think that definitely had a massive impact. Um, Cause I mean, so I didn't mention before, but my pieces are mixed media. So they they combine digital collage with um, painting. You say digital collage. Is your cam does your canvas already have the digital images on it, or do you place the images on a digital images onto your painted canvas? Yeah, so I mean, I, I want my pieces to be as graphic and as clean as possible. So I found a company, and I'm I'm not sure there's many other places that do it to the standard that I've got it. But um, I basically what I do is I will use Photoshop to collage um, the elements, it, you know, all the all the elements that I want to add into the piece. Um, it means I can also choose my color palette before I start painting. Yeah. And then what I do is I, I keep in the elements that are going to stay to be on canvas. And then I turn the cam the rest of the canvas white, print onto the canvas the elements that I've left over, and then I paint in to create the interior nice. around nice. it. So yeah, it's, it's not it's not hand cut scalpel stuck on just because I want it to be as clean as possible. You can you can see that line there. You could see it was, or at least elements of it were were printed on, or I presume they were, otherwise you had a very steady hand. Otherwise, uh, yeah, yeah, either I'm the best realist painter you've ever seen. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, yeah, it's digital collage, but yeah, it's the latter, unfortunately. But um, I didn't know if you was creating the graphic image first and then painting that, because there was the very first episode I've done on this podcast was um, an artist called Dougie Fields, who okay. was one of the earliest artists to start creating images on the screen and then painting those images like transferring them onto the canvas okay yeah and um yeah he was doing that in like the, the sort of mid to late 80s but his were very flat bold colors whereas okay. you know yours have a, a bit more form and life to the images itself he sounds great what's his name i might note that down. dougie fields he, he, dougie he passed fields. away during lockdown Oh, really? But, um, he, he referred to himself as a maximalist because everything about him was just bright and colour. And Yeah. That's yeah nice. If you was to take him and place him within his artwork, he would just blend in, it looked like fucking like camouflage, you know. Nice. Yeah. He was, he was great stuff. Did you know that, sorry, my art story started in prison? I did know that, so yeah. He was the first artist that ever wrote to me. Amazing, yeah. So, Charlie, if there was you and five other artists past and present what do you think your ideal group show would be Ooh. although you've already had hockney one side and banksy <laughs> the other so wow <laughs> so would this be would this be would this have to make curatorial sense or okay just none whatsoever um well edward hopper is one of my favorite artists of, of course time, so we've mentioned him i think i'd have to throw him in there um jean michel basquiat is another another favorite of mine i'm sure a lot of people would say that especially my generation um but i think he's he's such an amazing talent um yeah that neo-expressionist style was just was just brilliant um and then i also got to meet one of my artistic heroes last year actually um artist called michael craig martin oh wow yeah um, yeah so i went to his um most recent show at christaire roberts gallery and he was there and i got to talk to him for a while and um he wanted to see my work and everything and I think my work, I think, I think he liked it, which is good. But, you know, we, we have that fairly similar sort of pop minimalist style, I guess. I guess mine's more interiors and things. But he has a real focus on sort of uh, common objects. And I think there definitely was a time with that. So, yeah, that was brilliant. So he'd be my third. Um, Richard Hamilton, another one, the king of British pop art, I always say. Yes. Um, doesn't get enough credit for it. But, yeah, his, um, his collage... What is it that makes home so appealing? It's that long title, yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. one of the most influential works from pop art. Um, and I think you could see that influence in my earlier work when I had the black and white figures collaged in. Um, people used to say, "Oh, it reminds me of Richard Hamilton" and things like that. So I think he had a massive influence on my work in the beginning. And another one I'd go for, I would say Rene Magritte. Uh, yeah, cool. Surrealist. Yeah, he almost has that kind of slightly graphic nature of painting he almost feels like he's photoshopped or come up with the ideas on photoshop yeah in, i agree, in, in the, time, I agree. In the time that he was working which i think is just shows how an incredible how incredible he was so yeah. i'm going to settle on those five yeah that's, yeah that's not a bad five and how do you come up with the environments that you create 
So it's a lot of research um, into kind of visual um, different you know, styles of architecture. I've massively studied modernist architecture, you know, Luc Corbusier, um, Mears van der Rohe. Um, so I, I tend to kind of find a lot of different interiors that I like. And I will, instead of drawing, I take a lot of, um, I print off a lot of uh, different interiors and I'll have them sort of stuck around my studio. And I like to just draw sort of circles around elements that I like. So yeah, yeah. they're fictitious spaces that I'm creating, but they're formed. So it's almost like you're, you're like, creating them. Yeah. Sorry to talk over you there. So it's almost like you're creating your own mood board, if you like, and, and your own design comes in at the end. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly like that. So, you know, then I'll draw a sketch of, of the final thing that I think kind of makes sense. But it's complicated because you can add in all different elements that you like visually, but the perspective's got to be right. So you've got to be able to, you know, if there's a certain um, facade that I like or um, window frame that I like, you know, you've got to be able to tie them in so the perspectives make yeah, sense. Otherwise, it completely throws off your perspective. So, um, yeah, so that, that that tends to be how I kind of originally start creating these spaces, yeah. So because I've not seen one of your artworks in person, percentage-wise, what's the ratio of paint versus digital image? I think it depends on the piece, but I would say generally um, probably about 70% painting, 30% digital. Nice. Um, good, I mean, yeah, good I always tend to use, a lot of the scenes are sort of um, in the backgrounds are through windows. So there'll be a sort of a cityscape through the window in the background, for example. And sometimes that will be a big portion of the piece because it might be a sort of a closer view of something like a table yeah. with the background of a window. So, I mean, it, again, it, it probably varies from about 50-50 to about 70-30 um, to painting, I would say. Do you find any difficulty in being away from your studio and being back home in Jersey? Yeah, I think so. Um, like here, I set up a studio here at home, which was, uh, which was our attic, which we weren't using. But all of my pieces now are pretty large scale. I mean, the, the smallest works that I do are about 130 centimetres. Yeah. yeah tool so i can't fit those up into that attic studio then so <laughs> I'm, I'm making a painting now for this upcoming show here um and i'm in the garage so i'm in the sort of freezing cold garage but you know it has to you have to just get on with it oh, but of course. I, do, I do miss the space that i've created in london just because it is you know it becomes a part of your personality an extended version and you kind of just feel comfortable there so yeah, yeah well, i presume that. jersey is similar to um the isle of wight insofar as the young people from the island want to come to the mainland. I don't know whether they want to experience it or at least work on the mainland. And then a lot of them tend to sort of drift back later on in life to, well, to enjoy the island life, you know, get away from London or what have you. Is yeah, the same definitely. thing happen over Jersey? Yeah, massively. Yeah, I'd say so. And especially talking specifically about the creative fields, um, you know, there's not really any art schools over here or anything like that. So, you know, talented creatives want to go off to the top London art schools, you know, get a taste for city life and, and settle in and meet interesting people, I think, because yeah. um, there's all of that. Um, it's a big finance centre here. So you see a lot of people who are working in that world staying, but creatives, yeah, they want to go and go and experience things in, in big cities and, you know, uh, and then fair play to them. But yeah, you see a lot of people wanting to come back later on in life and kind of retire. But you know, there's there are advantages to living here, which I'm sure you know about, with, you know, of course, apps and, thing, and things yeah. like that. And um, you know, it's it's if you're not born in Jersey, it's incredibly hard to come and live here. Yeah. So you know, it is it is a real privilege that later in life you you can come back here and, and and settle down and live by the beach and you know. So there is there is you can see why people do it for sure. Yeah. And as a creative, is the mindset different being in a fast paced city and a slower paced island life? I think so. And I think because like we touched on before, the themes of my pieces tend to be about, you know, the nature of living in a, in a major city and, and yeah. feeling isolated. And um, I think when I'm back here, I create different, uh, not different work completely, but there may, might be a different, different, a different feel. Different feel, yeah. Yeah, because I, think so. I mean, you've seen over the last 10 years or so, the, the creatives in the big cities, or at least I, I'm you know, I come from the London area, so I am really only speaking about London here, mm. but the creatives have been sort of pushed out of, of London and they're sort of heading, from, from my part, they're heading sort of like south, east and south, you know. Yeah, yeah the, the world's a smaller place now, so 
um, living a, a, a two hour commute isn't too bad, just like, um, I don't know how long it takes to fly from Jersey to London, but um, I would have thought it's probably just as long as, as um, traveling in from Brighton possibly, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a 30 minute flight, so you can do two hours door to door pretty easily. But I mean, yeah, London's fucking expensive. I mean, it's just, you know. And that's, that's from someone living on Jersey. Yeah, well, they, they, oh, I mean, Jersey's, Jersey's probably even worse. I mean, yeah, yeah crazy. But it's stuff. a different entity, isn't it? It's a different entity. Uh, house prices and stuff are just astronomical. But but no, London for creatives and stuff, you know, everyone finds it expensive. I was, I was lucky in the studios that I was in before the ones I'm in in Stockwell now um, was in Chancery Lane, Holborn. So oh, really wow. central. Yeah, it was a guardianship, so it was with a charity. So there was about a hundred artists in the whole of the building, but it's essentially an old office building. Yeah, we've got takeover on a guardianship, which means it's cheap rent, and you can be central. So it's brilliant. But the only problem was is that developers come along and they go, "Oh, I want to buy that that building to to do up," and um, so you have to leave. So that kind yeah. of what happened. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's what's happened in everywhere. Yeah, and the thing is, the like like. Margate, the the artists will go there, and then soon after, once the coffee shops follow them, yeah. and the the delis, then the um, graphic designers, then the estate agents, and then they're moving on again, aren't they? A decade or so later. Exactly. Yeah, and I think Margate's a pretty good example of that at the moment. Everyone's kind of flocking there. Um, yeah. It seems to become a bit of a hub because Tracy Emmons' new art school and her studios that she set up there, and um, it's great to see. It's great to see. And where would your ideal place be to, to have a studio? In London or just generally? Just generally. Anywhere. Um, I do love London, but I'd love to be in New York for a bit. Um, I know how difficult that is. Um, oh, as it happens, now you've said that, your, your work would be perfect over there, wouldn't it? I think so. I think, again, it's another major city. So I think, and I think even more so than London, places like Manhattan feel that kind of hustle and bustle busyness, but feeling quite isolated in a small flat. Yeah, you know, that, there's definitely a big feeling of that, especially um, with that Edward Hopper feel, because they are so proud of of Hopper over there, aren't mm, they? You know, they are massively, yeah. So I think that's a subject that would resonate quite well with them, yeah. And what do you think you'd like to do if you wasn't an artist? Ooh, that's a tricky one for artists to answer, you know, because it's it really does become your life. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I guess it would have been going back to the graphic design route. Um, I mean, I'd still have to be creative. I think anyone who's an artist, you know, being creative, you have to be creative in your job. You know, it's, it, it, it's almost essential to be happy, really. But um, other than that, I'd be a footballer. Love football. So I guess, Perfect, yeah, yeah I, think, I think I'd go down that route if I could. But uh, growing up, you know, it was, it was artist and footballer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd love to be a rock star, but I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> uh, that doesn't really work. <laughs> Brilliant. And just give us a little summary again, Charlie, about the exhibition you've got going on over there, when it is, where it is, and what have you. Sure, absolutely. So it's going to be taking place from the 24th of March um, for about five weeks to the beginning of May. Um, we are showing, I think there's probably about 30 artists, um, including the secondary market ones like Ian Davenport. Um, I think we've got some stuff by Damien Hurst. Um, yeah, some pretty big names, which is great to have on board. But yeah, all in all, about 30 artists and about 70 works probably in a salon hang. Nice. So it would be like, you know, like Enter and, and, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. I think we're going to do bright colored walls a bit like the um, Royal Academy summer show you know coming into spring make people feel happy bright works and yeah on for about five weeks and preview taking place on the 24th of March so it should be a lot of fun excellent and I think it's probably about seven or eight actually maybe even more I'd say up to about 10 or 10 or 12 um, primary artists so a lot of emerging artists, artists that I know who are, whose work I thought would fit perfectly. We've got um, artists like Charlotte Rose, who works closely with Enter, who's brilliant. I've recorded with her a couple of weeks ago. She's coming oh, cool. out in about two weeks or something. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, she's talented and doing very well with Enter. Her and Poppy Fawn are the two um, Enter artists that I've got on board. Actually, as well as Benjamin Thomas Taylor. I don't know if you know him. I don't. No, he's brilliant. Um, I met him 
when we did a show together actually at Enter, a sort of um, art yard sale, which was fun. And he's known for creating the Paolo Nettini Caustic Love album cover. Very okay. famous album when it came out about 15 years ago, probably. But um, yeah, so he's he's very talented. We've got the Cameron Twins who do... I only found those a little while ago via... I don't know who that was via, but yeah, I saw them a little while ago. Oh, via um, Ream Gallery. Ream, yeah, no, exactly. They did a show there, and that's how I discovered them as well. Got you. Um, and they, they do these brilliant um, screen print, pop art, uh, very neon colours. I think it's almost perfect for that kind of show. Um, so we're excited to have them on board. And yeah, it's going to be it's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. It's been fun doing curation. I, I, I created my first show last year, um, which was in London. Um, we hired a space at the Fitzrovia Gallery in nice. Wine Fitzrovia and had about six or seven artists, in, including myself. And I just loved it, you know, making the art and, you know, getting to work closely and choose artworks, yeah. complement one another is, it's great. Did you find it difficult, challenging? Um, it's always challenging um, because I was working closely with the gallery director over here. I sent a load of stuff of being like, I think this could be a perfect fit for the show and, and, you know, he might have other thoughts about certain things. He'll go, brilliant, brilliant. No, that doesn't really work. And it creates a dialogue because you go, oh, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Actually, maybe we were, because initially we were looking at generally sort of quite graphic artwork as a broad theme. And we've narrowed it down a bit more to sort of graphic pop with fig more figurative stuff, I guess. So yeah. we had a few artists that I liked that I pitched who did more sort of graphic um, abstract shapes. Um, which didn't really end up fitting the theme very well. So yeah, it, it's it's good working along another, one another and kind of bouncing those ideas from, from one to each other, yeah. Nice. And what's the title of the show? Um, it's a working title at the moment, but we're going for Blurred Lines. Um, oh, yeah. Almost like an antithesis to the clean straight lines that will be shown. Of course, of course, yeah. And the blurred aspect sort of working through genres from, you know, op art, pop art, kind of almost blending into kind of similar dialogues i guess that you can have between the two you know you can hang a, a bridget riley um dot painting next to a damien her spot painting you know yeah 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 and, yeah. and it kind of it, it the blurred lines between you know those kind of things trickling into one another so yeah it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be fun trying to merge and hang everything in the right way so good sounds exciting yeah and other than that is there anything else you've got coming up yeah, so it's been it's been a really busy time. So um, I've just taken on representation in South Korea, nice. which is great. Um, the Asian market I've found the last couple of years has been my work's been really popular there. Um, and yeah, South Korea was was one Seoul specifically is and somewhere I've been. If I could just be nosy, how did that come about finding a market in South Korea? Yeah, it's interesting. So, well, I've got a show coming up with a gallery called 42 Art Space in Beijing. And I think the South Korean gallery might have seen something through there about my work and thought, oh, well, that would fit, you know, my, my clients taste nice. perfectly. So they got in touch over Instagram, which is, it's, it's just such a great tool. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of the things actually come through that and, you know, they'll get in touch over email. They might have seen your website, but the initial contact, I think, tends to be Instagram. Cool um so yeah maybe through that and i've done some stuff in singapore um so yeah working my way through asia basically trying to kind of <laughs> yeah, make roots in every asian city that i can find circumnavigating but, absolutely so yeah that's been a lot of fun um but yeah i think the market suits my work quite well bright colorful like like the artists we mentioned before that are absolutely adored in asia julian op michael craig martin it's it's that you know dougie Phillips. i'm sure was probably quite popular there as well yeah yeah he was he was when I come about him, which was mid nineties, he had uh, several years before he had previously flourished in the Japanese market. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. So yeah, that, that's been a real focus of mine and it's, it's, it's come to fruition, I think quite well recently. So yeah, I'm excited about this representation. They've already sold a few pieces of mine within three days of representation. So nice. We're, we're, I'm, I'm excited for, for what's to come and um, and the show in Beijing will be great as well so hoping to fly out there if possible but who knows we'll see <laughs> wow good on you and where can anybody find you be it social media or website yep so I'm on Instagram Charlie HT art is my Instagram handle got my website which is just charliehadentaylor.com um, all on there and then 
yeah, my South Korean gallery, which is uh, Choicey Young Gallery. And then you can find me in various places like um, for my prints, which is Enter Gallery, Art Republic and uh, Addicted Gallery in Singapore for the Asian. Brilliant. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm around. Yeah. Well, that's all my questions asked, Charlie. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. It's been great chatting. Cheers. See you later on, mate. Take care. Bye -bye. Well, hope you enjoyed that episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. So we wasn't dictated to by advertisers, we decided from the offset to go ad-free, which means obviously we had to self-fund. So we set up the Ministry of Arts Patreon page. And without that support, we would not be able to produce this podcast. So if you like what you hear and you're able to support the podcast, just go over to the Ministry of Arts Instagram profile. You'll find a Linktree drop-down box, which will direct you straight to our Patreon page. And for the price of a cup of coffee, you can help keep us growing week by week. But if you're not able to do that, that's fine because this content is free for everyone. But leaving a review on whichever platform you listen to your podcast, that really does help us get noticed and anyone else looking for an art podcast. Or even giving us a positive shout out on your social media. Everything is appreciated. But either way, thanks for listening. And until next week, sad art.